All right, so I'm back. I've looked at all my data and I've entered it. And I want you to see what it's, how it's going to look different across the um, different, different, different types of design. So between subject design, you know, you have 16 participants with just one, one answer to the question, the whole questionnaire, the three item questionnaire. So you got, they only have one answer to the questionnaire, the whole thing, right? There were three questions. They only gave one answer on each question. And then they have these different conditions. So there's actually a lot more rows in the same um, design of the same size with the same number of numerical observations. All of these data sets have this same number, these same numbers in them. You can kind of, you can kind of see that here. You got five, one, five, one, and three, 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 and zero, right? It's all the same numbers. Just trust me. Now, so between subjects design, it's going to have more rows. Within subjects design, right, you have 16 observations here per question. This one, 16 observations, right, like like 16 observations per question, but here you have one, two, three, four observations per question. So you have four different rows, right? Um, if that doesn't make sense, just think about the design. When we have a within subjects design, each participant gives us an answer for every condition. If there's four conditions, we have four times less the number of participants in a within subjects data set than we do in a between subjects data set. You see 16 versus four, but these four participants give us four times the amount of the amount of information. Um, additionally, additionally, right? Um, if we look at the mixed design here, we have half as much much observations as we do in the complete the between subjects design but we have twice as much as we do with the completely within subjects design because each participant only gives us two questionnaires worth of data and these i don't know what these are these are going to get deleted it hates me it hates my right click on the mac i don't know why cut See you later. All right, so, right? Like, it makes sense. Like, it's between has a number of observations that are between the mixed and, and the, or I'm sorry, the, the, excuse me, the mixed has a number of observations that is between the between number, no, well, I'm sorry, one more time, we'll restart this. The mixed data set has twice the number of rows has the completely within data set, but it has half as many rows as the completely between data set. And this is just all due to what these designs are. You can, if you want to look at this, you can look at this. I'll probably post this on our website by the end of today if you want to look at this more, but I'm sure you're worried more about analyzing your data. So what does that look like? Well, well let's go ahead and do it for each one of these data sets. Remember, there's three data sets here. I have have them split up by the word break, just so we can see how we do this. So we have analyze, right? Well, first, 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 wait, 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 before we can, we can't analyze yet, can we? No, we have these questionnaires that we have to average across, okay? And if you look back at the at the data I used, the second the first question was how happy are you? The second was how sad are you? And the third was how peaceful are you? Now, I could average these all together right now, but you should notice a big red flag, right? If you average in like a five, let, let's just say a participant gave you a five on the happiness score, a five on the sadness score, and a five on the peacefulness score, and you average that together to get a five, you're actually not representing their their um, happiness very well because when they said they were extremely sad, that number shouldn't that that number should decrease the average, right? That like when somebody's very sad, they're not happy. So we need to account for that. And that's called reverse scoring. Now, what the heck is reverse scoring? It's very simple. Let's take a number line like one, two, three, four, and five, which we currently have. 
And all we want to do is we want to say, okay, if you score a one, you get a five. If you score a five, you, you get a one. If you score a two, you get a four. If you score a four, you get a two. And if you score a three, you say that stay the same. So we want to reverse. Here's the reverse scoring. Five, four, three, two, one. So we want to reverse this. And five in this case was my largest scale option. One was my lowest. And so... Like, you're like, okay, so I got to translate every one of these ones into a five. This three is going to stay a three. This is a five, a five, a one, a three, a four, and all that. Now, you can do that by hand. It won't, it won't break, it won't take away too much of your time. Or you can allow SPSS to do all these calculations for you. Now, first, let me show you the, the reverse scoring algorithm. It's the, it's your score minus the, and I'm gonna put it in parentheses, highest number on your scale plus one. And actually I reversed that. It's actually the highest number on your scale plus one minus your score. Sorry for the, Sometimes like simple stuff like that gets gets turned around in my mind. Sorry about that. But the reverse scoring algorithm is the highest um, number on your scale plus one minus your score. Let me show you. The highest number on our scale is five plus one equals six, right? So what's six minus one? It equals five. And look, oh, one should be reverse scored to five. Cool. Let's see if this works for six minus two. That equals four. Two should become a four. Super. Well, let's... I'm not going to do all of them, but let's try four. Six minus four equals two. And let's just do the last one. Six minus five equals one. And then I might as well do them all. Six minus three equals three. It all works, right? So now I understand a reverse scoring algorithm, what I'm going to do. And I'm just dealing with this data set over here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to reverse score question number two. That's my sadness question. Okay. So transform. In order to compute new variables you have to hit the transform button it means transform your data okay so let's transform our data we're going to compute a variable we're going to call it reverse score sadness and i'm just going to write between so we know it's the between subjects design that's just because of how i set this up and then that just equals six minus question two i click ok um, I'm going to close out my output because I don't really need output right now. And let's see. Hey, look, it put it, it put it here. So now I'm going to move it. I like to grab and move it to where it should be. Um, right here, reverse score. I'm going to put it after the two, right? But reverse score, sadness between. I'm going to go ahead. I don't know why it's saying that's nominal. Let's make sure that's a scale. And we go back to our data and there we go we we have a reverse score of our sadness score okay and you're like oh cool can I analyze my data yet nope it's a questionnaire so we need to represent that questionnaire as one number for the participant in order for us to be able to analyze our data so we're gonna have to just average together the happiness question the reverse score sadness question and the are you at peace question so let's just let's just do that real quick. That's not too hard. Transform compute variable, right? Um, and this is going to be called mean happiness score because I'm lazy and that's the most creative I can come up with right now. And in order to do that, you have all these functions here. And if you look down, one of them, uh, it doesn't, I don't know why it's not in arithmetic. Let me see if they got yeah, statistical. So you, you can put, you want to use the mean, right? You want to use the mean sort of function. You have a lot of, you want to use standard deviation function. You could use it, whatever. You just have to throw the mean up there. Or you can type in mean in all capital letters. Now the mean of what? The mean of multiple observations. If you look, look here, it's saying question mark, comma, question mark. That's the formula in which you have to put your data into this specific expression. So I want to average together. And I remember when I was 
I used to be able to, like years ago, like select all of these at the same time, but it's not letting me do that anymore. Okay, fine. So I'm putting in my happiness question. Am I going to put in my sadness question? Oh, heck no. Putting in the reverse score of it. And then I am going to go ahead and put in my third question. I'm going to click OK. Right? It shows you what it's doing. I like to close this out. That just annoys me. Right? Then I move the score to the place in my data set. I just, I'm just left clicking it and I'm dragging across the screen. I'm not doing anything special right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my mean happiness score in there. Right? And so now what do I do? Well, I just simply analyze right general linear model univariate to analyze my data i have everything in here to analyze my data now i took my score i reverse scored the item that needed to be reverse scored i averaged those together so now i have a dependent variable and now i'm going to do my analysis on that de dependent variable mean happiness score everything here like everything from hq3 to hq1 that doesn't really matter that's just i need it in the data set to know where this came from but ultimately, I'm not going to do analyses on each question or anything like that. I'm going to do an analysis on the mean. That's how we do it in psychology. So um, a dependent variable is my mean happiness questionnaire. And if you notice, you can only enter in one. So that's a big clue to you that if you're trying to do it once per, ch per each item in the questionnaire, you're doing a bad job. Um, and then I have, two I have two fixed factors, right? That just means my predictors. I have an independent variable of empathy and independent variable of emotion. You do not have to worry about random factors. You do not have to worry about covariates. You do not have to worry about weights, okay? Um, the model you don't have to worry about. Let's, the contrast you don't have to worry about. Let's go ahead and click plots. I do like to click plots and I like to click in, remember when I said you could break the independent variable two different ways? So this one, this plot right here is going to have my empathy condition on the horizontal axis. So I'm going to have high and low empathy on the x axis. I'm going to have different lines for the emotion condition. But sometimes you might want the reverse. You might want uh, the emotion condition on the axis and, the, and different lines by empathy. So I'm just going to go ahead and click both in there and I'm going to get two plots because what I'm showing you how to do is just run SPSS once and never worry about it again. Okay? Your post hocs, I want everything for everyone. And then, you know, it's like, okay, it's between, I could use two keys, you know, I could use LSD. I honestly don't care. Choose one of these two. Right, um, you could use two, two keys B2, it doesn't matter. A lot of people say chef is the best one to use. Like, honestly, at the end of the day, for your projects, use LSD or, or two keys if you're required to. Uh, we can click them both to see what's going to happen. Um, two keys B, but you know, I don't want that. I want you all to have the most power, and as long as your lab professor is okay with you using LSD, then use LSD. And I don't mean it in a funny way. You can laugh at me, but you know what I mean statistically. All right? I don't have time for your jokes today. Okay? I do not. I do not have time for your jokes today. We're serious. We're serious with our stats. Okay. So with that being stated, um, I click continue, and that's just my post talks. Saving anything, you don't want to save anything. I just want to show you what's in there. Nothing nothing important. Options generally are important. Um, unless you want to calculate your descriptive statistics by hand, throw everything over here. Um, now, one of the things that you'll see in the past, you never had your, um, I'm going to go back to the post talks and see if it's if it's what it's doing again because this is an interesting option because I can get more postdocs here right so I'm gonna click I'm gonna click it right now and I'm gonna click back on my postdocs and postdoc tests for the empathy condition postdoc tests for the emotion condition so essentially um, I'm not gonna need this options button clicked but I do want all my means here. I'm going to click it anyways to see if I get to see what the output looks like, right? Because I'm going to give you a massive output here and walk you through it. Then I'm going to do the descriptive statistics 
because I need those, I want those, I don't want to have to calculate my means and standard deviations. And you know what? Estimates of effect size, it's going to give you partial eta squared, which you know what it means. And that's all I'm going to want for you all right now. Okay? So this is our between subjects analysis. We're going to do this completely. Then we're going to repeat for all the, for the other two types. All right. All right. And, it, and, it, and it's nice. It's telling you, hey, post hocs are not performed for the empathy condition. Post hocs are not performed for the emotion condition because they're fewer than three groups. Why wouldn't it do post hocs? Because if, if you have two groups and your main effects are significant, there's no other way they can be different. So they don't need to do it. I'm still going to click those options, but that's fine. This right here just tells you the number of observations in each of your condition, 8, 8, 8, and 8. That completely makes sense based on what we, what we had, okay? Um, yes. And then... So that's just for the for kind of like the whole thing, right? Empathy condition one, low empathy, but but really, really something funny is going on up here. I don't know why the ends are kind of off, but it's just kind of looking at total, I guess. I don't really I don't really know what these are doing, but down in the descriptive statistics, you see the right number of n. That is kind of weird to me though that it's reporting an n of eight over here and here. I don't know, you know what, that's that's so confusing that I think it's worth worth deleting. Um, if it'll let me click it and delete it. Cut, bye bye. Oh, come on. Normally you can just, you can just click on it and delete it, but of course I'm, Ah, uh, function delete. Sorry, Mac users. Backspace doesn't work. All right, so we have four people in the low empathy sad condition, four observations in the low empathy, and they're people too. Happy condition, four observations all around. Total observation, 16. Uh, our test of between subjects effects. Now, the intercept, don't worry about it, but as, don't worry about it. I'm not even going to talk about it. Your empathy condition, that's your main effect of your empathy. So here... These are our sums of squares, our degrees of freedom, our mean squared, our f value, and our p value, and our partial eta squared. So let's interpret this one. We have, in terms of this specific statistic, our f ratio is less than one, which is weird, right? So this is saying that our estimate of our error is really low. Our p-value is saying this is a non-significant difference. Our partial eta squared is saying this, this variable only accounts for 2.4% of the variation in the dependent variable. In the empathy, in the emotion condition, we have very similar results, right? Sums of squares, degrees of freedom, mean squared, that's this divided by this equals this. Our F statistic, signal to noise ratio minus one. We have a really crappy signal to noise ratio. Our P value is not significant and our partial eta squared is 3.6%. And the interaction right here, again, not significant. Um, degrees of freedom mean squared F, not significant and barely accounting for anything. This is our error term. So in order to get these Fs, you know, you can see this here, 0.655 divided by basically 2 is 0.35. This divided by basically 2, this divided by basically 2, this divided by basically 2, and so forth. So right there, that's those are your two main effects in your interactions. Um, in terms of, like, what are our means? So we have estimated marginal means. So we got low empathy, high empathy, mean, mean, standard, standard error. To get to standard deviation, you multiply that by the square root of n if you want, and you have your confidence bounds. But those are your means. Those are those are really nice. Um, oh, it you know where the one post hoc didn't work? It actually on the options it went ahead and ran my um, it ran those LSD tests. Right, and I want to show you it ran it for the empathy variable and look, look right there, right? The LSD tests have the identical p-value 
okay, to the p-value we found up here. But you don't need this because it's only two levels. But still, I'm just kind of having fun with math here. But since you're like, come on, Ricky, I'm trying to get my project done. I'll delete it just because it was fun for me. It doesn't mean it was fun for you. I get it. Um, these, these contrast effects, like you're not going to have to worry about that. You have your means and standard errors if you want standard deviations multiplied by the square root of n, which I would think that's easier than just getting regular descriptive statistics, but that's me. I'm kind of, I like to just do one thing in SPSS and be done with it. Um, we get the same thing again, right? Our p-value is identical to the p-value up here, but we don't need these pairwise comparisons that were done um, in the options function there. Um, univariate tests we don't need. And then, you know, we have our um, empathy, like condition, emotion condition, like interaction stuff. So we have all the cell means and standard errors to get to standard deviation. You multiply by the square root of n. And finally, you can see we have the same information represented twice. And I like to do this. I will do this all day, every day, right? So notice here, we have the lines are based on the emotion condition. And over here, the lines are based on the empathy condition, right? Ultimately, we had a non-significant interaction. So we know these two slopes are the same. And if you look, it kind of truncates the variable. So you can't really see here, but um, essentially this no slope is statistically identical to this positive slope right here, right? But it's the same thing. Th these slopes are essentially the same. We have, you know, essentially a no slope for low empathy, right? That's our, well, we have not a no slope, but we have a very large slope for our low empathy. If we look down here, this blue line represents the difference between these two numbers and this green line represents the difference between these two numbers. But they're the same data and the interaction is just a test of slopes. So if you have a significant interaction, you can look at this data and see if there's a significant test of slopes. Now, I don't know what they recommended in the lab, but with a two by two, I'm gonna argue you don't have to do follow-ups because there are only two slopes. If you have anything like a three by two, right? Like it, the interaction is a test of are these two slopes different? There's only one way these two slopes can be different. That's, that's how they are. They're different right there, right? So we don't really have to do a follow-up. It's not like, it's, not like it's, a, it's a huge, you know, it's a huge difficult thing to notice that this slope is almost nothing and this slope increases. If we had a significant interaction, we would say that, that these slopes have, are differing in slope and that this slope has no slope at all and this slope has a positive slope and thus they're different. But, but if you did want to compare them, all you would do is go ahead and do, in this case, independent sample t-test here, independent sample t-test here, or an independent sample t-test here, and an independent sample t-test there. Right, like I'm not a huge fan of follow-ups to interactions like others. Follow what they told you, but that will require you to go outside of this specific part of your program and just run regular old uh, independent samples t-tests on those particular means. Which you know, honestly, I'll go analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test, put in your two. You know, you're you're gonna have to. So if we did that, if we, I'm not going to click all the way through it, right? But let's say, ooh, yeah, I'm, we're not, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. If you need to do that, call me and we'll do it together, okay? If you want to do follow-up comparisons, call me, we can do it together. Or you can, you know, easily get the, much easier to get this information through my program. I'm not going to lie, but since you all are required to use SPSS, I'll show you how to get it. But essentially that's it. That's, that's our between subjects analysis. All right. So now I'm going to close this output, save. No, I don't, I, I don't really want to save these right now. You should save. So now I got to do the same thing, but I have to do so for my completely within subject design. So my first thing I have to do is I have to reverse score this column. I have to reverse score this column and I have to reverse score this column. So this is gonna be fun, isn't it? Okay, so it's just like before except we have to do it multiple times. This is our sad question. 
The reasoning is the same, so I'm just going to show you how to do this. Transform, compute variable, right? Reverse score, cute, and actually I'm just going to do this. R, S, question two, and then my first case of question two is high, sad, okay? And then all I have to do there is take six minus question two, high, sad. Okay, and I'm gonna go through and do all these together. I'm not gonna move them yet. All right, and it does this annoying thing where it just keeps showing me output. Transform, compute variable, right? Question two, high sad, let's do low sad next. And if you label stuff the way I do, you can see you can just go in and just go ahead and just change the names. Perfect. Nope. Transform compute variable. So I got high sad, low sad. So now I need high happy and low happy. So high happy. And then up here we can see I labeled it high happy. There is this is the column we're reverse scoring. High happy, right? This is the column we're reverse scoring. This is the one we did last time. This is the one we did the first time. So I click OK. It does my reverse scoring for me. No. And then I got to do it one final time for this one right here. Transform compute variable. It's low happy. So I change it to low happy here. And I change it to low happy here. I click OK. And then I have all these reverse scores here. So what I'm going to do is select them all and I'm going to go ahead and move them all over to where I need them. And I need them right here for right now, this side of the break. And then I want to put them where they actually go in the data set, which is a little bit harder than with a between if it would let me drag. So I'm putting it after Q2 high sad, Q2 low sad is going after Q2 low sad. Right, Q2 high happy is going after Q2 high happy, and then this one goes after Q2 low happy. And you know, it was really useful to have those labeled as nominal, but right now I'm going to go ahead and change them all back to scale. It was useful because I was able to like easily move them to the different areas. So now we're back, we're going back to our data view, right? Completely within design, and Let's let's figure out how we're going to do that. Analyze, compare means. Nope. General linear model for all factorial designs. I'll explain that to you in a lecture in a couple days. Now we have repeated measures because we have all repeated measures. We have two factors and we have to name them. So this is my empathy condition. There's two levels. And then there's my emotion condition, which also has two levels. And now I'm telling my, all this is telling SPSS is that I have a two by two within subjects design. And that means I'm gonna have four columns that I need to fill out. So I click design, right? And so now it's like one, two, one, 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 two. You see these up here? I have to find the variable that's one, one. So what is, you know, one on empathy is a low, right? So I have to find low on empathy and on emotion, one was sad. So now, and, and it's okay, like, that's how I'm gonna do it, okay? I'll, I'll come back to that. So what, what specifically, well, actually, I can't do this yet. I skipped a step. So let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? All I did was reverse score my items. Now I gotta create the averages so I am going to have to create four averages. So sorry I got ahead of myself, but come on back. Transform, compute variable. I need to create a mean. So I need a mean happiness questionnaire. The whole thing is a happiness questionnaire. I know there's a happiness question, but there's the, it's all a happiness questionnaire. Just trust me. Okay. So now... I have to do mean happiness questionnaire, but I have to do it for 
I'm going to look at my data over here, right? And we can see, okay, I can do it for high sad first. So I'm going to do it high sad. And that all that is is the mean of Q1 high sad, the reverse scored of Q2 on high sad, and Q3 on high sad. I hate that. No. Transform, compute variable. I'm going to do the same thing, except now I'm going to have high happy. Actually, I'm going to see what's next. High sad, low sad. I'm going to do low sad because that's what shows up next in my data set. See, high sads and low sads. So then I'm just like, for this one, I'm just going to restart it. So I got question one, low sad, question two, reverse scored on low sad, and question three on low sad right there. So now I click OK, and it did that for me. And I click this, and I click no. Transform, compute variable. I'm going to go faster now, right? So what's our next one after low sad? It's high happy. So high and happy. Right? Um, just to be safe, I never mess around with something like this. But okay, I do sometimes. But like for you all, just be safe. So now we find our high happy question one. Throw it in here. High happy question two. Our reverse scored. High happy question three. Right? That's the peaceful question. I click OK. Perfect. Nope. Now let's do the last one, transform compute variable. And we got we got the same thing here. Um, what's our last set? So our last set is low happy, so I changed the name to low happy. Right? And then I'm just going, okay, question one, low happy. Question two, reverse scored on low happy. And you can notice I might have it out of the out of order there, but that's okay. And I don't know why my stuff's still nominal. I thought I'd change those, but maybe maybe I messed that up, but it doesn't matter, okay? So I'm just gonna leave it. We're too far along for me to go back and change that. You saw what should have happened and it didn't happen. And then question three, low happy, clicks okay. And so now, nope, I'm gonna go move, move these questions, move these sums back to my data set and you know where I'm gonna put these ones I'm gonna put these ones right next. well actually I'm just gonna put them at the end boom and I'm not gonna split them up by their different types because this is gonna make my data analysis process easier so this is completely within so now we get get a get to do this again analyze do we go to compare means oh no we go to general linear model we go to repeated measures I am removing all the work I did in the past because it, it isn't fair, but I got empathy. I got two levels adding that. I got emotion. I got two levels. I'm adding that. I'm defining it. And so here I need to put in the mean where empathy is one and emotion is one. So let's just say when empathy is one, empathy is low and emotion is one. Emotion is sad. So I need to put in the mean for low sad right here, right? And when empathy is one, it's low and two is happy. So for low and happy, empathy low and happy, that mean of the happiness questionnaire goes here. So I'm looking for low and happy. Oh, I put, how did I get participant in there? I have no idea how that one went in there. So my first one, is my happiness questionnaire low low empathy sadness so we got low and sad goes here right here right and you can see it takes it away for you so it makes your life a little bit easier and then it's like okay I need low and happy perfect now I need high and sad and since they're together I'm just gonna throw them in like that so I got all my data in there now. And what's going on is this right here is low empathy, 
low uh, sadness, low empathy, happiness, high empathy, sadness, high empathy, um, happiness, or yeah, high empathy, happiness. Okay, so now it's like okay, let's just let's just go through and look at all the options because I feel like that's going to be the easiest. We want none of this in the model. In the contrast, we want none of that in the contrast of the plots. You got to ask yourself, which one makes more sense to you? Now, does it make more sense to split up my data to have separate lines for empathy or separate lines for emotion? Depends on what you're interested in. I'm an empathy researcher, so empathy is the primary predictor for me. And so empathy is going to go on the horizontal axis. And then I'm going to want separate lines by emotion. But for you, you may want it the other way. And you, you may say, well, actually, I want to have emotion on the horizontal axis and emp separate lines by empathy. OK, well, go ahead and add that, and I'll show you the difference. But you just have to choose one. So now we're through plots. Clicking on our post docs, we have no options here. Because it's a within subject design, we don't get to choose post docs. Do I want to save anything? You want to save nothing. So cancel. And then your options. I actually want estimated means and marginal means and cell means for everything. I want to compare my main effects by Tukey's LSD. I want descriptive statistics and I want estimates of effect size, which are going to be partial A to squared. And since I've taught you that, you should easily put those on your posters. Even if they're not required, you should put those on your posters. All right. So then I've clicked all my options. You can watch this multiple times and do the same thing. Hear why I'm doing them. I click OK. And what do we get? We get um, first thing that you want to do is check to make sure you have empathy is low and emotion is sad and happy. Um, low, sad, low and happy. And then we want empathy is high with sad and happy so we did that correctly if you find an error here you got to re-enter your means into um, SPSS in the step that we just did descriptive statistics these are great they're telling you your means and standard deviations for every single gr group so I love the descriptive statistics for this specific design I wish SPSS was more consistent in how it presented its data now we got our multivariate tests, which do not matter for you, OK? These go bye-bye, even though they look like actual tests. Test of sphericity, this is just saying um, that all the, the variance in all your four conditions is the same. Um, we're not, I'm not going to teach you that, though. All right. You should, if you end up in grad school, you should look at that. But I'm going to tell you right now, most people don't. I'm guilty. We're all guilty. Okay. So now we're at our test of within subjects effects, which is where all your results are going to lie. So now you have all these different options here. But if you notice in this case with a balanced design, all the options are the same. So it doesn't matter. It's only when you have unbalanced design that these options will be different. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, well, unbalanced and there's going to be cases when you have severe sort of differences in standard deviation across your conditions. Nonetheless, all we have to do is realize this is our main effect of empathy. This is the error term for that main effect, which means it almost means nothing to you. Your main effect for emotion, your error term for that. Your main, your interaction, your error term for that. And you'll notice very similar lack of significance as last time. I'm, I made the data small so that we could see how to enter it. But first, first thing you got here, this is your sum of squares, your degrees of freedom. This divided by this equals this. Beautiful. Your F is this divided by your error term, mean squared. So this divided by this is this. And if you do the math, it'll make sense. Your P value and your partial eta squared. So this is a non there's a non-significant difference between these two conditions, right? And finally, uh, your partial eta squared is accounting for 13% of the variation in your dependent variable. So that's not a lot. So this specific empathy is accounting for 13% of the variation in happiness. 
So here we look at our emotion main effect here. We have our sum squares, our degrees of freedom, our mean squared. This divided by this is this. This divided by this is this. This p-value comes from tables, right? And our partial eta squared is 0.16. This is a non-significant difference with a, with, that accounts for about 12% of the variation in the dependent variable. It's small. It's, it's what it is. Um, your interaction. We got the same things here. I'm not going to do the this over this stuff. Just look your p-value. And look, you always got to look significance. Not your f-value, not your partial eta squared. Your p-value is 0 0.50. That's non-significant. Your partial eta squared is about 16% of the variation. Okay? These tests of within subjects contrasts do not matter. These tests of between subjects effects, we don't have any. They do not matter, okay? For the completely within subjects design, here are your um, pairwise comparisons. So these are post hocs. We don't need them because it's only a two level, but if you have a three level condition, it's going to do all your pairwise comparisons down here. Your multivariate tests do not matter. You have the same thing here. Multivariate tests do not matter. And then you have all these means and standard errors for your um, empathy and emotion condition variables. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could take this and calculate T scores for, for the comparison of empathy one, so that's low empathy, um, when emotion sad versus happy. So all you would have to do is break out your, your T formula, okay? And you could you could you could go through it this way, or you could break out like a T conversion calculator, or you could just create a new data set and do um, little little dependent samples T tests on the each comparison. Like you could do, oh, you could have like a dependent samples T test on this comparison or this comparison. But I don't think that's required. If it is, I want you to email me or meet with me, and I can help you do those. Okay. Um, because there's only going to be a few of you that need to do them, and it doesn't make sense for me to explain it. Also, I don't agree with the process because a interaction is just a test of slopes. If these two slopes are different, we can see exactly how these two slopes are different. There's nothing else we need. I actually don't understand why people convert slope differences into, into mean differences because like, we all understand like if there was an interaction here, this slope is significantly different from this one. This one's basically a flat line and this one's increasing, right? Like if you had two that were increasing, you had a significant interaction. You just say the one that's increasing more is increasing significantly more. It's not rocket surgery here. So... I wouldn't necessarily even do those follow-up tests, even though I've given them to you in my program, and they're not given to you in SPSS, which just requires you to do a whole new data analysis, which is why I hate SPSS, but I'm going to show you how to use it anyways. But that's our data. And then you can see, like, you have the two graphs, and with any interaction graphs like this, you need to take it out to dinner, spend 20 minutes with it. Well, don't take it out. Cook it dinner, spend 20 minutes with it, and understand what the heck's going on, right? So let's say we had a significant inter interaction. What does that process look like? Well, I am saying, okay, I wish it had labels on here. Another failure of SPSS, but I have the same failure in my program, but I'll have mine fixed in a year. They've been doing this for at least 40 years. So come on, guys. Fix your program, little little cheap fools. So when we have empathy condition is happiness, doesn't, if you're made to be happy in your emotion condition, excuse me, it doesn't matter if you also get a low empathy or high empathy condition. That, that doesn't matter at all. Okay. That doesn't affect your happiness at all. If the happiness manipulation is great. However, if you're in a sadness manipulation and you have the low empathy condition, you're less happy than if you have um, if you're in the sad condition and you're given an empathy intervention. So what this would tell me is that empathy interventions increase happiness damn near to the level that a happiness intervention does. And, and so that's what I see here. When I, the reason why I, I do actually print out both graphs is I might get a different understanding by looking at this graph. So what I see here is when empathy is low, right? When empathy is, is low, 
A happiness manipulation makes someone happy. However, when empathy is high, a happiness manipulation does increase happiness a little bit, but it's barely, right? That's what I see. And I, look, I had different interpretations by looking at the graph differently, right? But that's just, that's just good practice to look at both interaction terms and talk about them. Talk about them out loud till they make sense. But that's how you do that analysis. Let's do our final one, and I'm going to speed through it since I want to open up my office hours. It's almost 9 o'clock. I'm going to I'm going to start I'm going to speed through this next one. I'm going to end end it right here. Save contents of the viewer. No, I don't want to save the contents. I want to do my final analysis. So, you should know right now we got to reverse score our sadness questions. And I gave this a poor label there. I want to go back to my data view and see what happens. Of course, one little mistake and it moved everything for me. So I'm just going to go get rid of these guys. We we saw the right way to do this. I'm just going to go push them back this way. Just kind of, I hit control Z and like it just, I don't know what it did. So basically I'm noticing here I got Q1 sad, Q2 sad, Q3 sad, Q1, Q2. Q3. Um, oh, they, I just got confused. Question one, question two, question three. Question one, question two, question three. We're all good. What I need to do is rev like the sad thing got me confused, right? So I need to realize question two is a sadness question, but this sad is the sadness condition. So let's just start this over. Okay, I got a reverse score. All question twos. So let's just do that real quick. Transform, compute variable, Q2, sad, reverse scored. I'm just going to be a, I'm going to work a little bit faster now. Six minus Q2, sad, boom. Okay. Okay, it contains an elite, oh, fine. All right, boom. It, get, it, it distracts me from my very task because it's a bad program. Sorry, SPSS. I think your program's horrible. Transform, compute variable. And you all can, it's better than PSPP though. We can agree on that. Question two, um, happy reverse score. And I know it's confusing, but that's just how it works. Okay, so minus question two. And I wrote it the right way. Happy, click OK, right? So now I've got my, my reverse scores done. No. So these are my two reverse scores. I'm going to go ahead and put them where they belong. Right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and calculate my two. I have to calculate two means now. Now, the, if I'm moving too fast, it's like, OK, what mean do I have to calculate? Well, I have to calculate a mean for when the participant is in the sad emotion, and I have to calculate a mean for when the participant is in a happy emotion. So transform compute variable sort of happiness question error. And you know I spelled that wrong. And that is totally you know happiness survey. There we go. That, that makes more sense for me. doesn't require a spell check. Y'all can make fun of my horrible spelling, but you can't deny that my math skills are pretty good. You know, we can't all be good at everything. Um, so my happiness survey for when, um, for when they are sad. So here what I have to do is create an average, which they use the word mean for. So I enter in my uh, first number. So I'm doing this for sad. Question one, sad. Averaged with question two, sad, reverse scored. Because that's the one that was worded the opposite direction from what we wanted to measure. And then we get question three, sad, in there as well. And then we click OK. Sure. Hopefully it did it for me we can see that we have the new variable there. Transform compute variable, happiness survey for the happy condition. Um, and then I can just change these to happy. There's only two of them. I can look right here and see that um, 
So I got question. One happy, question two happy, but I want the question two happy reverse scored, question three happy right there. So I've entered them in. You could do the method I showed you earlier, but I'm trying to I'm trying to get this done. I want to start my office hours. So then now what I have, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move all I'm gonna move these guys here because I no longer need these, right? So these are the, this information right here, just these three columns are all I need to do my analysis. So now we go analyze, GLM, repeated measures, um, removing all of this junk, right? And then I realize that I have two levels of my emotion, two levels, I'm gonna add those. I'm gonna click define and so what i need to do is get rid of it kept my old variables in there but i need to put which one do i want to put first i still want sad to be the first emotion so i put them in like this and then i got a between subjects and factor which is literally right here is my empathy condition code put it right up in there um we we saw everything we looked at before we don't need any contrast. We don't need models. We're definitely going to want to plot this. Um, for me, how am I going to plot it? Uh, I'm going to plot it both ways again. Like I said before, that's helpful. So then I'm just doing that, hitting continue. Post hocs, you can't do post hocs for within subjects variables. I can do it. For my between subjects variable, I'm going to choose LSD again just because you all have low power and you should preserve some power in your analyses. Um, I'm not going to save anything. I'm going to click my options. And you'll notice that most of them stay kind of clicked here. But I'm just, I like to throw everything at the estimated marginal means. I'm going to go ahead and do my LSD test twice. Just, it's just because, like, Look, I'm going to take my time and process the data, but ultimately, I just don't want to have to do this again. Like, it, to me, it's kind of annoying to hit all these buttons again. And so then I get everything I want, descriptive statistics, effect sizes, click OK. And now we get, and it tells me that same warning. It didn't perform postdocs because there are only two conditions of my empathy condition, but it will do them because I clicked the, well, we'll do it for some. We'll see what it, we get. Okay, again, this stuff doesn't really matter. These are descriptive statistics. Those are really nice. I like those. Um, you get better descriptives from the within subjects output than you do from the between. But you can calculate standard deviation from standard error. So don't run another analysis. Just do simple math. Now, multivariate tests, those do not matter. The test of sphericity does not matter, right? Notice, in this case, it really doesn't matter. Everything's the same, but it doesn't always work out that way. But here we go. We got our sum squares, our degrees of freedom. Divide by, divide this by this. Get our mean squares. Our F is, is this divided by our error term. This divided by our error term, right? Our p-value, non-significant, partial eta squared, 8.2%. That's for our main effect of emotion. Our interaction of emotion by empathy, and it, it doesn't always put everything in the same order either, so you got to pay attention to what's going on. So all this is saying right here, same stuff as before, F, p-value, non-significant, counts for 5.6% of the variation. And one thing too, if you want to look at the differences in the analyses to see the differences in the designs in terms of power and things like that, um, you can essentially see that I've used all the same data. Now, test of within subjects contrast, that doesn't matter to you. Function delete. Test of between subjects effects, this is your other main effect, your main effect of the empathy condition. Same stuff, same stuff. We know the F, our p value is non significant, 4.2%. Now, 
we get our marginal means. Now this is for high-low empathy, means and standard error. You can convert those to standard deviation divided by the square root of n, and n being the number of participants in both high empathy conditions, okay? Uh, wait, let me see. Yeah, they were both in, there was, uh, between subjects was high and low empathy, within was sad and happy. So I could, I could look at that. Um, this does my pairwise comparison, so this is the postdoc test. Um, my univariate tests, uh, those do not matter, okay? So those get deleted. Then it does the same thing for empathy here. We get our means and standard errors. We get our pairwise comparisons. If you want, you can go up and see that this p-value of 0.492 is going to be identical to this p-value of 0.492. So like, like these aren't really, like when you have two groups in a ANOVA, like the follow-up test doesn't need to be done. It's already being done essentially. Um, yeah, there I was. Multivariate tests, whenever you see that, ignore. And then empathy condition code times the emotion code. These are all my means and standard errors for all these different um, cell means, but it doesn't give me the standard deviation. So you got to look how many participants are there per cell, and then we can go up here and see four, 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 four. But those are number of observations, so it's kind of complicated. But we do know well, but that works too. So we know we have in the happiness, the happiness sad. We have eight participants. The happiness, happy, we have eight participants. Um, from those participants, we get four observations per each um, cell. Anyways, when you need to calculate n, just go back to your data and do it by hand because sometimes the SPSS output doesn't even make sense to me. So I'm not even going to break that down. But if you had a three-level comparison, this is where you get all your pairwise comparisons. Right, this is where it all is for a three-level comparison. For a two-level comparison, you don't have to do this. I just clicked it anyways, okay? Um, right here, we got our interaction. We got our means and standard deviations. Standard error, we find the number of participants in this cell, the number of participants in this cell, the number of participants in this cell, and we take that divided by the square root of n just to get standard, er standard deviation. And then we now get our two graphs. They look identical to the ones I talked about before, but that is it. That's how you do SPSS data analysis.